look yourself in the mirror and that's the only person you have to answer to is that person staring back at you. And every day when I wake up, brush my teeth, look myself in the mirror, I'm happy with the man that's staring back at me. And at the end of the day, as long as I'm happy, as long as the good Lord's happy, and as long as my wife is happy, we all win. Everybody wins in the end. You've probably seen me from a little TV show called Duck Dynasty, but in spite of all of that, no matter what it is, I'm always gonna be chasing ducks. So when I was about 10 years old, my dad's friend from the paper mill asked, hey, do you think your sons would wanna go duck hunting? And I was like, you know, you, you grew up in North Louisiana, you, you heard a duck commander, you heard of duck, so it was kind of a cool thing, like a, a cool concept, but I, I had never been. My only experience with ducks were the woodies that lived in the beaver pond on our deer lease. You know, I just didn't have any experience with them. So I went and I saw them ducks flying and I saw them guys shooting. And of course I was shooting too, but I wasn't killing them. So I went and got me a duck call. It was an old cut down reacher duck commander, one that we're back making now, but I mean, one of Phil's original duck calls he built a company off of, I'll never forget it. I was blowing my duck call, it was just Mallard Drake. He come out of the fog and started backpedaling. And I just raised up, boom, shot him. And from that moment on, right there, I had called in and confirmed killed my first mallard duck. I have been absolutely eat up with it ever since. Growing up, I couldn't get enough of it. Like, I just, and my parents were awesome. And the fact they told me, like, you stay out of trouble, you keep a job, you play football, you keep your grades up. We will always have you a place to duck hunt. And that's something I'll never, never be able to repay them for. So I grew up a deer hunter. My grandparents, um, they did not duck hunt. They were deer hunters and crappie fishermen. So by trade, that's what I grew up as, as a deer hunter and a crappie fisherman. And they made sure that the outdoors was a part of my life from the time I was born. And I, I got to give my grandparents all the credit in the world because without them, I wouldn't be who I am today because they always made time to take me hunting and fishing. When you grow up in Louisiana, the outdoors are just, they're born into you. So they taught me how to love the outdoors, how to respect it, but also how to work, like make the land better, give back to the animals, give back to the critters, which is why today I still do that. So in that was a flower, and now that'll produce a seed. And if you notice, that one plant probably, I mean, look at all the seeds. So then you look out here and amongst us, and it's just a field of it. So when we kill it and it lays down, <clears throat> all that seed is gonna be on the ground available for ducks once, once the winter comes. I'm a nerd. So, look, I'm a self-admitted nerd. I love working on grasses and trees and food plots and junk like that to make things better. I, I want to leave this world better than I found it. And along the way, I tax it for a few ducks and a few deer. You know, I think it's a pretty even trade for all the habitat work that we do. I mean, I love it. I can't, I can't get enough of it. I love working this land. You look out here, we've mowed this hole like the past three years. It was just a low with like bad aquatic vegetation. So we've come in, mowed it, got it dry. It's now growing. The reason these ducks are in here is because it's full of smart weed, sprangle top. I just can't imagine life without ducks. So my first job in the outdoors that led to me working at Duck Commander, I actually worked at TP Outdoors, a little small sporting goods store in West Monroe, Louisiana. I worked there when I was in college. Um, and through that, but when I was doing that, I met Willie and we became friends, um, and when I was in graduate school in college, told you I was a nerd, don't forget that part of it. But when I was in graduate school in college, I, uh, I called Willie one day and said, hey man, I, I need something to get this research and this data and all this, all this information. I just need like mind numbing labor. I said, and I'll never forget, I told him, I said, look, I'll do it for free. I just need something to like, just, just clear my head. And he said, what, you work for free? And I was like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't need that. I, I don't need the money, whatever. And I guess I officially started whenever I got my email address. <laughs> and I sent Willie an email from my at duckcommander.com email. He was like, well, I guess I'll start paying you now. So 
Uh, that was back in 2010, and here we are 11 years later. Uh, hard, to, hard to believe I've worked at Duck Commander for a third of my life, but man, it's something I'm thankful for, because without Duck Commander, I don't know where I'd be. I know I'd still be duck hunting. I do know that. I'd hate to know just how many hours I've sit in this chair building these duck calls. That's the one the company was founded off of, right there, Classic Commander, Phil's original baby. But I'll say this, you miss it when you ain't in here, because I'm not in here much anymore. You know, one thing that I like to keep in my life, and, and I highly recommend to everybody, surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with people that are successful in whatever walk of life they're in. Um, surround yourself with people that are arguably better than you because that competition and that drive from those type of people will bring you up as well while you're steadily, steadily challenging them. You know, everybody knows I'm good friends um, with Jacob Wheeler, best bass fisherman in the world. But he challenges me every day to be better because I want to up my game because I don't want him to be better than me at something. Like, and it's a cool thing, but if you, will, if you will surround yourself with those kind of people, it makes it so much easier on you to be able to bet on yourself. If you stay true to who you are, you find whatever passion that may be. For me, it was ducks. For Willie Robertson, for example, it's being a successful businessman. That, that businessman drives him. The entrepreneurship drives him. Find whatever that is and challenge yourself to be a better person. It is truly all about family, friends, and the outdoors. But if you narrow it down to just them three things and forget the hard work, forget the fun, then what are you doing it for? There's a lot of other things you can do to make money and if you don't want to have fun. But if you want to have fun, go duck hunt. I highly recommend. If you want to have fun, go deer hunt. If you want to have fun, go turkey hunt. And if you want to really have fun, take somebody that's never been for crying out loud and watch their eyes when they see it for the first time. And you see that smile on their face? That's what it's all about, guys. That's why we do what we do.